is any year. The place, the city of Scarrow. The time, midnight. As one by one, Sir Gramercy Ghost, Petunia Witch, Winona Witch, and her favorite pet, Dwight, the flying purple dragon, enter the city square, ever so cautiously, with candle in hand. It's a minute after midnight And the night is black as night Hey, everybody! Shh! Shh! Don't Don't make make a a sound sound. All right, all right, all right It's a minute after midnight And the moon is royal blue Don't tell a soul what we are here to do. I, Sir Gramercy Ghost, mayor of the city known as Scarum, where we love to live most, hereby officially declare them. The meeting of the Scarum Society of Gallant Ghosts and Winsome Witches for happy haunting and special spookery in any area will now begin. Will now begin. It's a minute after midnight and the air is cold and clear. Shh, shh. Keep very still and let I see who's here and let us see who's here, see who's here. So Gramercy calls the roll and discovers his nephew Gabriel Ghost is missing. However, Gabriel presently appears and disrupts the meeting by tootling on his hum trumpet. But Sir Gramercy finally brings the meeting to order again. Now, if I may continue, there's work to be done and we haven't much time. Sylvia Spirit reports that the House of the Month is in New York City. It is a very big, very old, very empty house. And someone is going to move into it the day after tomorrow, which means... Yes. Yes. According to the rules of the Scarum Society, one of us must begin to haunt that house before the clock strikes midnight again. Or else, that house goes unhaunted forever. No! No. I wonder which one of us will go. Oh, who will haunt the house? A someone bold and daring. A someone good and scary. Should go and haunt the house. But who, oh, who will haunt the house? Now I could haunt the house with my electric laughter, which rattles every rafter. I could haunt the house. Oh, yes. Yes, I could haunt the house. I've haunted oh so many. He's very proud to boast. I have the honor of being the world's most famous ghost. I knew I'd like to haunt the house. My method is perfected, and if I am elected, I'll really haunt that house. By George, I'll really haunt that house. My dear friends, if I am elected... Oh, campaign speeches, Sir Gramercy. Yeah. No, I could haunt the house without the slightest trouble. I'd make my cauldron bubble and smoke up all the rooms inside that lovely, lovely house. <laughs> I'd like to haunt the house. <laughs> Perhaps I do it badly, but still I do it gladly. I'd like to haunt the house. Oh, gee, I'd like to haunt the house. It sounds exciting, thrilling. It takes my breath away And though I've never haunted I'd like to try today Oh, who will haunt the house? Oh, who will do the daring? Oh, who will do the scaring? I'd like to haunt They all draw straws from Winona's broom 
and Gabriel wins the assignment to haunt the house of the month. Gabriel is overjoyed. Petunia and Sir Gramercy, who are all hands at haunting, are pleased and delighted by this turn of events because Gabriel has never haunted a house before. But then, neither has Winona. Gabriel, may Dwight and I go with you? No, Winona. There are some things a ghost must do alone, even if he doesn't know how. Oh, Winona, it's not that I don't want you and Dwight to come along. It's just that, well, this is my first haunting job, and, well, you'll understand when it gets to be your turn. Oh, Gabriel, that's impossible. It'll never be my turn. Well, sure it will, Winona. Look, I thought I'd never get a chance to go haunting. I thought it was impossible. It couldn't happen to me. And see, it did. Oh, but Gabriel, with me, the impossible is impossible. No, Winona, you've got it all wrong. The impossible just takes a little longer. The impossible's a steeper hill to climb. If you keep your goal in sight and keep trying day and night, the impossible is possible in time. The impossible just takes a little longer. Do remember this when things get in your way. From the minute you begin, don't give up and don't give in. The impossible is possible, we say. You can stop a waterfall. Or go floating through a wall. Build a snowman when it's June. Or go flying to the sun. Moon! I get it. The impossible. That's right! Going haunting's a job I've never done. I was worried up till now, but I'll hurry and learn how. The impossible is going to be fun. The impossible is going to be fun. Yo! As the meeting is about to break up, Count Chive Oregano, the mean master magician, rushes into the city square. When he is told that he is too late to be considered for the new haunting assignment and that Gabriel is to haunt the house of the month, Oregano is upset and furious because he has just received word from his great-great-grandfather, Rothschild Oregano, the banker, that in that very house of the month is a magnificent, overflowing pot of gold, which the Count wants very badly. When he is alone, Count Oregano thinks up a master plan which he believes will stop Gabriel from getting to the house of the month first. I could be an owl, a mean old owl, or a panting panther on the prowl, and you ought to hear me when I howl as a wonderful wailing wind. Be a cat, a mean old cat, or perhaps a bat, a big black bat. But what I like to be much more than that is a wonderful wailing wind. No one will ever realize that. I am wearing a disguise. No, I will not be recognized. Oh, won't the others be surprised? <laughs> I could be a tree, a gnarled old tree, or a giant monster from the sea. But the one disguise that's really me is a wonderful Wailing. Ooh. 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 Meanwhile, back at Sir Gramercy's house, the distinguished ghost gives his nephew Gabriel a few pointers on haunting. Haunting is easy, my dear nephew, when you know how. And you're about to know how. Yes, it's time you learned the tricks of your trade. There are three important steps. Uh, 
If you jingle your chains and squeak the floors, rattle the windows and the doors, you'll have begun step number one of being a great, great ghost. If you laugh with a happy, hollow tone, then make a mighty mournful moan, you will be through step number two of being a great, great ghost. Here's an extra helping word about the whole routine. Ghosts are always, always heard, but never, never seen. Most im. Important of all that you must do, go out and get a great big boo. This is step three. With this, you'll be a genuine great, great ghost. I can jingle my chains and squeak the floors, rattle the windows and the doors. Now you have done step number one of being a great, great ghost. I can laugh with a happy hollow tone. <laughs> That's it. Listen, I'll make my mournful moan. <sighs> you just went through step number two of being a great, great ghost. Here's an extra helping word about the whole routine. Ghosts are always old. But never, never seen. As for step number three, I wish I knew where I could find a great big boo. That's up to you, but when you do, you'll be a great, great, I'll be a great, great, genuine great. Gabriel thanks his uncle and goes to Petunia Witch's house to say goodbye to Petunia and her sister Winona. Winona has made some fresh super snail sandwiches for Gabriel to take with him. Before he leaves, Petunia calls Gabriel over to her bubbling cauldron. I have something for you too. It comes from a secret recipe which has been handed down for years and years from witch to witch. <laughs> the fumes of rattlesnake soup. What are fumes? Oh. <laughs> fumes are smoke with a special smell. If you ask me, they're the best thing to use when you haunt a house. Oh, they're mysterious and strange and odd and peculiar and spooky and... <laughs> oh, and always successful. They'll be ready soon. I'm just putting in the final soup ingredients now. Watch. One little eye of a frog. One little tail from a crow. Yoo-hoo. One little skin from a crocodile's chin. It's my heavenly rattlesnake soup. <laughs> One yellow tooth from a cow. One curly wing from a bee. Tee-hee. One skinny nail from the toe of a whale. It's my heavenly rattlesnake soup. Stir it once and stir it twice. Add a little pickle spice. When the pot begins to shake, then you add a rattlesnake. Goodbye, Aloysius. Everything's going so fine. Everything's going so well. Just smell. No other brew has the get up and go of my heavenly, 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 heavenly rattlesnake soap. Gabriel then goes off to the Scarum Ghost Port. He has taken a plane to the House of the Month because he'll get there faster that way. He checks his equipment and realizes that he doesn't have a great big boo. But with the help of the audience, he gets one, which he puts into his flight bag. However, just as he is about to board the plane, he is confronted by Count Chive Oregano, who has disguised himself as a mummy as part of his master plan. Oregano dupes Gabriel, takes his plane ticket, locks the little ghost in a ghost-proof invisible closet, 
and prepares to catch the plane. I'm off to search the house and find my golden treasure, my gold, my golden treasure, which waits inside the house. <laughs> Last call for passengers departing on flight 298 to New York City. All aboard. I'm off to search the house. <laughs> Gabriel is left alone, trapped inside the tiny invisible closet as the curtain falls on Act One. Act two begins as Winona Witch dashes into the airport with Dwight, her flying purple dragon friend, who must stay outside the ghost port gates because dragons are not allowed in ghost ports. Winona has with her the super snail sandwiches she has made especially for Gabriel, and which Gabriel forgot to take along. Winona sees no one and believes Gabriel has already left on the plane. However, she bumps into the invisible closet and slowly realizes what it is and who is inside. And although she desperately tries to free Gabriel, she is, alas, powerless. Gosh, things just never seem to go quite right. Dwight? I have never cast a magic spell And I don't tell fortunes very well Black cats make me sneeze and sneeze They also make me itch I guess I'm just a wishy-washy witch When I call for sunshine, I get rain When I want things banished they remain if i had a dime for each mistake i would be rich i guess i'm just a wishy-washy witch i can't even whistle though i try i really try lightning makes me shiver and what's even worse I'm sure I'm a flop, if you know what I mean. Once I even slept through Halloween. Yesterday I even ran my broom into a ditch. I guess I'm just a wishy-washy witch. Oh, Dwight. I am a flop. Your friend Winona is a flop, that's all. Oh, won't I ever be a terrific witch? If my magic powers were to grow, I could charm a certain ghost I know. Maybe someday things will change and I will make a switch. And no more be a wishy-washy witch. However, Winona is determined and finally figures out that what she needs is an invisible key with which to unlock the invisible closet door. The key she makes is the wrong size and the key Dwight makes is too big. So Winona asks her audience to make invisible keys and they do, and one of them works, and Gabriel is free. The problem now is how to get to the house of the month before Count Oregano can cause trouble. Going by Winona's broom is not the answer, because neither of them can drive it. Finally, Gabriel gets a brilliant idea. They will travel on Dwight. Well, after all, he is a flying purple dragon, but... Dwight doesn't like Gabriel's brilliant idea. He doesn't want to go. He's afraid of night driving. <coughs> oh, please, Dwight, don't be so stubborn. We'll have a wonderful time. We'll be off on a trip through the sky. We'll go zooming through space. We'll go higher than high. Moonbeams will cheer us as we pass through. What a beautiful purple dragon built for two. You're so fast, 
you can beat any train Or the speediest car Or a rocketing plane We'll be the fastest folks that ever flew On a beautiful purple dragon built for two What a ride, what a ride, what a ride You won't regret it What a ride, what a ride, what a ride Today it will be scrumptious traveling with you. You're a beautiful purple dragon. You're a beautiful purple dragon. You're a beautiful purple dragon. Built for two. And off they go. And at the same time, Petunia Witch carrying an eel sandwich of shortening bread under her arm, appears at Sir Gramercy's house, and she and the famous ghost reminisce about the good old days of haunting. You have a wonderful memory, Sir G. That's right, Petunia. But I bet you don't remember everything. Like what, for instance? Do you remember Boston? Boston. Boston, do you remember Boston? were chosen to go haunting and when we got to boston the pilgrims were next door we were a dreamy teamy working way back then when will this dreamy teamy go to work again yes i remember boston we loved boston yes we remember boston in 1624 and now petunia i have one for you <laughs> Do you remember Paris? Paris! Paris, do you remember Paris in 1829? When each of us were chosen to go haunting And when we got to Paris, your house was next to mine We were a charming couple haunting Paris, France When will this charming couple have another chance? Yes, I remember Paris We, we loved Paris Yes, we remember Paris in 1829 <laughs> oh, 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 shall we have another go-round, Sir G? Of course. Do you recall Granada? Ah, Granada. Do you recall Granada in 1492? Come, come, was when exploring we went haunting and when we reached Granada, my house was next to you. Gruesome to some when we haunted Spain. When will this gruesome to some go to Spain again? Oh, hey, it's fun to think of all our jolly journeys, those one double adventures the two of us went through to Boston ah! and Paris. Their visit is interrupted by an announcement over TV that Gabriel and Winona have been spotted in the sky riding Dwight. Petunia and Sir Gramercy realize that something has gone wrong, and they immediately take off for the house of the month on Petunia's modern broom in case their help is needed. Once everyone is inside the house of the month, a merry chase ensues. Sir Gramercy and Petunia are looking for Gabriel and Winona who are looking for Count Oregano, who is looking for the pot of gold, which Oregano finds just as the others find each other. Gabriel first unravels Count Oregano's mummy disguise, and to make the Count's embarrassment twice as embarrassing, the Count discovers that his prize pot of gold does not contain gold at all. It contains limer beans, and Oregano leaves totally miserable. Since Count Oregano is no longer in the way to cause trouble, Sir Gramercy, 
Petunia, and Winona prepare to travel back to Scarum so that Gabriel can start haunting the house of the month before the clock strikes midnight. But Gabriel calls Winona back. Winona, can you get back to Scarum all right? Oh, sure, Gabriel. Dwight always knows the way to go home. Well, then I'll, I'll see you in seven times 24. Uh, seven fours are 28, you kind of two, seven. Two. I'll see you in 168 hours. And Winona, thanks for everything. I think you're a terrific witch. Oh, gosh. Thanks, Gabriel. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, now to begin. First, I jingle my chains and squeak the floors, rattle the windows and the doors. Now, this is step one. Now, everyone, please give me a great big boo. Woo! Now I laugh with my happy, hollow tone. <laughs> then make a mighty, mournful moan. <laughs> this is step two. Now, all of you, please give me a great big boo. I got here in time. I'm haunting the house. I'm a genuine ghost. At last it's true. I might become a great one too. And if I do, it's thanks to you.